start a project like this you never know what you might possibly run into with an older used RV now Kevin is a very experienced RV person he's owned many of them camper vans different things of that nature but you you always tend to run into something that you don't see you didn't know was there and what we found was very well hidden there was no way to know until we got to the point where we were removing all of the old caulk to lay down new to reseal the roof and put down the Henry's Tropical. Let me show you what we found. Up here in the front, there's a, a metal trim that runs the full width of the roof and it wraps around both sides. It was heavily caulked and then recaulked with extra die core. Started taking that die core up and underneath we found what looked like a little bit of moisture started taking more of it off more of the die core off and we pulled back this is the rubber roof right here it's in good shape so this is at some point been replaced throughout the years we're not sure it looks like maybe about a three to four year old rubber roof and underneath there is luon you can see it right there this roof is a sandwich of luon styrofoam it has a galvanized steel frame that the sandwich of Luon and styrofoam sits in and on the underside there's Luon. Now there's no damage on the interior. There's no visible signs and there's no damage. It's not soft. The roof, the ceiling inside is just fine. It was contained to the Luon that was on top of the roof and you can see a little bit of discoloration from the wood. That is the only area that was stained with any moisture. The styrofoam is fine. There's no rust. You can see the, the steel frame up there. There's no rust on it. There's no rust on the side. So we, what we did is we cut out this piece of the Luon, bought some new, and we're going to glue it back in because it was glued to the styrofoam and then the rubber was glued to the Luon. So we're going to put it back exactly the way it was. We're going to make it a little extra waterproof with some of the Henry's tape along the seam when it's all buttoned up. And then more die core on top of that and then the henry's tropical sealant so this will never have any problems with water infiltration again but again it was just very very mild all it did was the wood right here you can see the staining that's the area where the moisture was we just cut out the whole piece to make it a more solid repair all the way along the width and where it ties into the luon that's existing that's hasn't been damaged at all that just kind of goes to show, I've always said this, there are two kind of RVs, those that leak and those you haven't found the leak on. I'm embarrassed that I didn't find it. It was hid pretty good, but we found it just in time. It was in Arizona, it's a very dry climate, but when I got up here to Idaho, water got in. Imagine if I'd have went to Washington State and all that rain for six months to a year and then have done this. Then I would have had serious problems. Yeah, it's lucky we caught it when we did. Now you can see the new piece of Luon in place. As I said, we went all the way across to make it more structural. I could have cut it out about this far and just replaced one piece, but then you got a seam here and a lot of things to deal with. I'd rather have one seam along here that I can reinforce easier than to have one and then two. So one solid piece. Now for extra protection, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some Kills Original. This block stains and if, if any water at any point were to get in, it would help protect the wood. So I'm gonna spray this piece with the Kills, seal it up a little better, especially on the end and side grains to make sure that there, there is no chance for any moisture in the future to get in. So the Luon has been sprayed and glued to the foam. I didn't show that. We're trying to get it done so we had the sun come out so we could warm it up and it would adhere better. But basically what we did was we sprayed the um, foam 
with some Super 77 3M adhesive. I sprayed the back side of the Luon with it. You let it set, get a little tacky and put them together and it makes an incredibly strong permanent bond. Now I just sprayed the top of the Luon with the adhesive, laid down a bead of Dicor in the seam here and then put some of the Henry's fabric over top and it's got spray adhesive so with the rubber and that fabric and the Luon it'll solidify that seam and hopefully not squeak as CBK is rolling down the road. Over here I sprayed this with kills as I showed you and I sprayed this area because this is where the moisture was and I want to make sure just in case there's any residual moisture it does not seep into this wood so I sprayed the edges the end grain and the, the top and bottom of the Luon to where the water was so that it will prevent it from getting infiltrated and maybe rotting down the road. Whenever you have someone down on the ground that you want to lower a saw to, you don't want to hang your saw by the cord like this. It will damage the cord. It can pull it out from the back of the saw and it'll be ruined. So what you do is you take the cord wrap it through the handle like this bring it up over the front handle like that and that way when you're lowering you're lowering from the handle in the center it saves your tool and it's a safer way to lower it down to the person down below that's that's your backroads nomad tip for this episode so now i'm going to spray the rubber and let it get tacky while the luon is getting tacky and then we will roll it over onto the Luon, and I'll show you how that works. All right, I like to spray in sections, so that way I make sure I cover the whole piece. I don't want to go all the way down and back. This way, if I do it in sections, I make sure I get proper coverage of the glue. When I take the glue across, I don't turn my wrist. I, I go all the way across so I get an even coat. If I turn, I'm going to get less coat at that side, and I don't want that. So I'm going to mark out another section in a square. And you probably can't see it on camera, but I can see the glue where I made the square. And then I'll just spray back and forth, overlapping just slightly, taking it all the way, not turning bring my arm all the way across. And the end pieces I will do after I roll the center piece out. So we'll let it set for a couple minutes, let it get its tackiness going and then we'll roll it. I've let it set. It's got its tackiness to it. So next what I want to do is I'm going to come under here and I'm going to start rolling. And the reason I roll is I don't want to lay it and get an air bubble. I want to push all of the rubber flat and keep all of the air out as it works down along this panel. The rubber is nice and warm from the sun, so it'll get good adhesion. And if you do get a little bit of air, just slightly pick up on it, push the air bubble out, and keep rolling. You didn't put any screws in the top up there. In the where? In the top. Up here? Yeah. Well, the rubber meets that. You can, I can move it back just a little bit.
And that's how you lay down the rubber roof. Not too hard. Nice, you'll never even see it when it's all said and done. I'm gonna pull the edges back after this sets. Finish those off, glue them, and we'll be ready to start buttoning it up. I know you can see it and most likely hear it on the audio. That's wind, a lot of extreme wind. That's not gonna stop the roof and RV repairs so. though. there's a, a metal trim that runs the full width of the roof and it wraps around both sides it was heavily caulked and then recaulked with extra die core started taking that die core up and underneath we found what looked like a little bit of moisture started taking more of it off more of the die core off and we pulled back this is the rubber roof right here it's in good shape so this has at some point been replaced throughout the years. We're not sure, it looks like maybe about a three to four year old rubber roof. And underneath there is Luon. You can see it right there. This roof is a sandwich of Luon styrofoam. It has a galvanized steel frame that the sandwich of Luon and styrofoam sits in. And on the underside, there's Luon. Now there's no damage on the interior. There's no visible signs and there's no damage. It's not soft. The roof, the ceiling inside is just fine. It was contained to the Luon that was on top of the roof. And you can see a little bit of discoloration from the wood. That is the only area that was stained with any moisture. The styrofoam is fine. There's no rust. You can see the, the steel frame up there. There's no rust on it. There's no rust on the side. So we, what we did is we cut out this piece of the Luon bought some new and we're going to glue it back in because it was glued to the styrofoam and then the rubber was glued to the Luon. So we're going to put it back exactly the way it was. We're going to make it a little extra waterproof with some of the Henry's tape along the seam when it's all buttoned up and then more die core on top of that and then the Henry's Tropical sealant. So this will never have any problems with water infiltration again. But again, it was just very, very mild. All it did was the wood right here you can see the staining that's the area where the moisture was we just cut out the whole piece to make it a more solid repair all the way along the width and where it ties into the luon that's existing that's hasn't been damaged at all 